Hello friends. Today's class is based on the organic name reaction and today's topic is Bigginelli reaction, which is a very well-known reaction. We will learn it by its history with old and new proposed mechanism. Let us see the history. The photo in the right side you can see that is of Pietro Bigginelli. The lifespan was 1860 to 1937. He was an Italian chemist who discovered the Bigginelli synthesis, name reaction, right? And you can see a historical photograph of his laboratory where he worked and developed this reaction. Let us see. The Bigginelli was born in 25th of July, 1860 in Palazzolo, Versailles, and which was backbone of the kingdom of Piedmont, Sardinia. And he then attended to the University of Turin and studied under Isilo Goresci, a well-known Italian chemist and a chemistry historian person. In 1891, Bigginelli worked at the chemical laboratory of Florence for two years, and later he developed the method for the synthesis of pyrimidine, which is known as Bigginelli pyrimidone synthesis or pyrimidine synthesis later. In 1897, he already joined Rome as a lecturer. After that, in 1901, he co-editor moved the chemical laboratory states of medicine at Rome, where he was working as an assistant to the Bartolomeo Gosio, which was a famous chemist for the discovery of arsenic-containing volatile gas and known as Gosio gas. In 1925 to 1928, Bigginelli was working as a director and bench, uh, above mentioned chemical laboratory. And he died at 15 January 1937. That is the history of Bigginelli. And now let's see the principle. When we have a one coat condensation of three components, one aromatic aldehyde, second urea, and third ethyl acetoacetate, in ethanolic acidic solution, the reaction is known as Bigginelli reaction, and it belongs to a multi-component reaction. What is multi-component reaction? If you have more than two reactants and you are doing a one-fourth reaction, one-fourth synthesis, that is called multi-component reaction. Now, the reaction is very simple. Aldehyde, active methylene, ethyl acetoacetate, and urea condense in the alcoholic media with acid. That is formation of 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydropyrimidone. And that was developed by the uh, Bigginelli. The mechanism are two. First mechanism was proposed in 1973 by Sweep. And that is nothing. Just you have to take ethyl acetoacetate. It always get enolization. And enolate form attacks, nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon. You can see over here. The nucleophilic attack of enolate to the carbonyl carbon will lead to the aldol condensation, will lead to the aldol condensation of the product, right? And this product further may get, further may get protonated in the acidic media. You can see acidic media utilized, so protonated and get protomerized, convert into enolate form. And protonated enolate, protonated enolate will lead into the formation of OH2 plus. That is called protonated alcohol, right? That protonated alcohol is always unstable. So try to get the electron from nearby carbon. So this carbon will become positive, which may leads to attraction of electron from this position, which will lead to again the transfer of electron here to here. And after all, finally, the OH bonds electron will donate it here and H will lose its position with positive charge. And it leads to a formation of pi bond between carbon and oxygen. So again, it will convert into a protonated form. Again, it will convert to a protonated form. And this protonated form will react with urea. Urea will donate its electron present on the nitrogen as a lone pair will be donated to the carbon, which leads to the donation of electron here, right? The negative charge will make an inductive effect and electron will be donated to the oxygen, 
So oxygen may have now no charge over here, and this carbon will become positive by donating the electron. It leads to a formation of new double bond over here, that is here, right? And that is called enol form. That is called enol form. Enol form and the urea now donated electron here. So it is called conjugated addition of urea. Conjugated addition of urea. And we will get this intermediate. That will convert, get tautomerized into the OH, right? The tautomerization will take place and get protonated by the, here you can see enolate form is here. So if double bond transfers here, the hydrogen will shift here, right? So a simple carbonyl will form. But in presence of this H+, plus, in presence of this H+, plus, it will get protonated. It will get protonated which will become unstable, so snatch away the electron from here and leads to the formation of a carbonyl, right? Then the electron on nitrogen will do a nucleophilic attack to the carbonyl carbon. Nucleophilic attack to the carbonyl carbon and nitrogen will join here with the carbon which donated electron to the that, right? So it may lead to a cyclization process. It may lead to a cyclization process which leads to an intermediate. And this intermediate, this intermediate is the backbone of the pyrimidine synthesis, right? So this is the first way how the pyrimidone form and you can remove water molecule in the heating condition which may lead to a formation of double bond over here, right? Electron will be donated here. This electron will be donated here and the positive and negative charge, positive and negative charge may convert into a double bond and removal of water will be there. Now, the next mechanism was proposed by Kappe in 1997. The difference in the first and second method, first we will decide and then we will go ahead. In the first step, enolate will attack to the nucleophilic attack to the carbonyl. So active methylene and uh, aldehyde is condensed in the first proposed mechanism, while in the second proposed mechanism by Kappe, first urea will donate electron to the carbonyl carbon. It means the nucleophilic attack on lone pair of urea to the carbonyl carbon will lead to a formation of this structure intermediate, which may get totomerized and get react with the ethyl acetoacetate, further get cyclized and removal of water convert into the pyrimidone. So this is the another and latest mechanism for the pyrimidine synthesis. So there are two mechanisms. First in 1973, third, second, 1997. So two mechanisms are available in the history of pyrimidine synthesis. And these are the some references which utilize for the preparation of this presentation. Thank you very much for listening me patiently. I hope you will definitely subscribe to my channel, like this video and spread to your fr friends which are in the relevant field. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you get subscribed to my channel. Thank you.